Alright, welcome to section 10.2. In this one we're going to learn how to simplify radical expressions. So, when you get to the end of an answer, instead of having to use your calculator to take the square root of some nasty number, uh, we'll learn how to simplify it into simplified radical form, uh, which often takes longer than typing in your square root, in your calculator. But the reason it's better is because if you have something like the square root of 2, and you type it in your calculator, it'll just be an estimate. Whereas if you write it in simplified radical form, it is an exact value. So, first of all, a radical expression. This is any expression containing the radical symbol, of course. The radical symbol is this. So all of these problems that we're doing uh, in this section will have the radical symbol. And to be in simplified radical form, you're going to have some radicals, but there's some criteria you have to meet. The first is, all perfect squares are factored out and simplified. The second is, you can have no fractions inside of a radical. And the third is, you can have no radicals in the denominator. Now, this one here is really, really the, in my opinion, the key most important one. You factored out everything that can be factored out and simplified it as much as possible. However, having radicals in the denominator and or having fractions, a lot of people, myself included, don't actually think this is such a bad thing. So for example, uh, the square root of three halves. Me personally, I think that's a pretty okay answer. However, this has a fraction inside the radical um, and even if you wrote this as the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 2, which we'll see in just a second, if you write it this way, it has a radical in the denominator. So neither of these would be considered simplified radical form. Uh, but having said that, they are still pretty darn useful. So um, just uh, do whatever the book directions say for the problems. And then in class, if you have questions about it, you know, and say maybe we don't have to simplify it all the way, then I might give you permission. Okay, how do you do it? If you have radicals in the denominator, you have to rationalize the denominator. So you multiply the top and the bottom of a fraction by the radical that appears in the denominator. So let me give you the example we just had before. If you have square root of 3 over square root of 2, the way you rationalize the denominator, or get rid of the square root, is you multiply the entire thing by whatever radical appears in the bottom. So that's going to be square root of 2. Okay, And when you have square root of 2 times square root of 2, that's going to give you square root of 4, which is just 2. The reason this always works is because the square root of any number times itself just gives you back that number, 2. In the numerator, we've got square root of 3 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 6, which cannot be simplified. So this right here is going to be your simplest form. Okay. Uh, the other thing you might have to do is multiply by a conjugate. This is an expression that's the same except for a minus sign. If you have 3 over 2 plus root 5, okay, here you have in the denominator a square root, but it's attached to a 2. So you can't just put in, you know, square root of 5 because you have a 2 over here. So you have to put in the conjugate, which is 2 minus square root of 5. And then here the same thing. Okay, the reason this is great is because now in the bottom, we have multiply um, perfect square. A plus B and A minus B are conjugates, and these two things can be multiplied using FOIL. 2 times 2 is 4, but the inners and the outers cancel out. Remember, when you have a shortcut A plus B times A minus B, the inner and the outer cancels, so you just get the last times last, which is square root of 5 times negative square root of 5, which is minus 5. In the numerator, we distribute the 3 here and here, and we get 6 minus 3 root 5. Now simplify the bottom. The answer is 6 minus 3 root 5 over negative 1. And now simplify for the final answer. 6 divided by negative 1 is negative 6. Negative 3 root 5 divided by negative 1 is positive 3 root 5. Okay. So, whole bunch of problem solving tips, and we'll do lots of examples. Maybe it was poor for me to do those examples before you saw this stuff, but maybe not. So, in order to simplify radicals, the trick that you want to use is if you have a square root of two things multiplied together, you can break it apart as two separate square roots, and then each, each of these separate square roots you can simplify separately. Likewise, with a square root in, of a fraction, you can break apart the numerator and the denominator separately. So these, you just saw me doing a little bit of. These are the two tricks you're going to use most of all when simplifying radicals. So the first thing you do is factor out perfect squares. 
uh, then break them apart and then take the square root of any pieces that are perfect squares. If there's any pieces that are not perfect squares, like here or here, then you have to leave them as, as inside the radical. Okay, you can use this trick on both numbers and variables. So for example, the square root of x to the fourth is x squared times x squared. And that's just going to be x times x, which is x squared. Okay, Use conjugates to simplify any denominators that have a radical. Use a difference of squares to simplify conjugates. That's what I was just talking about before in the, the example I did previous slide difference of squares formula, you should always use this shortcut. You don't need to actually foil it out because the in inners and outers, the inners and the outers cancel. And then the last thing is you shouldn't be using any decimals anywhere. So the whole point of this section is that we don't have to type stuff into our calculator. We can simplify it completely without doing that. So let's do lots of examples. Simplify each expression, the square root of 28. So you're going to factor each of these numbers. You could prime factor it, but what's far better is factoring into perfect squares. So 28 I know is 4 times 7. So I can write this as the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 7. And fortunately the square root of 4 is a perfect square, so that's 2. The square root of 7 is not a perfect square, so we're trapped and we just say 2 root 7. Okay, let's try another one, 162. 162 can be written as 2 times 81. And again, you could keep factoring the 81 farther, but it's already a perfect square, which is what we want. So we can write this as the square root of 81 times the square root of 2. But the square root of 81 is a perfect square, so the square root of 81 is just 9 root 2. Let's look at maybe a harder example. Down here we're going to multiply. So when we're multiplying these, we want to multiply the outside number times the outside number. 4 times 3 is 12, and then here, 10 times 6 is 60. So the first thing we've done here is multiply these together, and then we can simplify them. So 60 can be written as, um, let's see, let's see, what perfect square goes into 60? I'm not sure. Maybe 4 multiplied by 15. Okay, so 4 is a perfect square. 15, though, is not. And if you break it down even farther, neither of these is perfect squares. So we can write this as 12 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 15. Okay, The square root of 4 is just 2, so we can write this as 12 times 2 times the square root of 15. And then lastly, we can combine these together and give us 24 times the square root of 15. So anytime you have... Um, pieces that are separated, you can recombine them. Let me go back one slide. You can use this to factor and break things apart, but you can also use it kind of in reverse to take two things that are separated and put them back together, again, under the square root symbol. Okay, Let's try one more, this one uh, with variables. We'll try number 11. So 300 could be broken into 3 times 100, and a to the fourth, well that's already a perfect square actually. It's a perfect square of a squared squared. Okay, so let's try to do this all at once. The hundred here, the square root of a hundred is ten. The square root of a squared squared, if I put a square root here, the square root cancels the squared, and I'm left with whatever was inside here, which is a squared. And I've got a three under the radical that doesn't have a perfect square, so it stays inside. So the square root of 300a to the fourth is 10a squared root 3. Kind of cool how you can do this without using a calculator. Okay, let's simplify some using division. So these guys here, the first thing you want to do is combine them together because they evenly divide. So 9 over 18 is going to reduce to just 1 half. Okay, and now you want to multiply by root 2 over root 2. This is called multiply by the rad rationalize the denominator. So in the numerator, 1 times 2 is 2. In the denominator, square root of 2, square root of 2 cancels out and just gives us 2. So we've rationalized the denominator. Anytime you multiply a square root by itself, the square root just disappears. Okay, let's try this one. Here, 
You don't want to combine them together because 100 doesn't divide into 121. You just want to be clever here. Square root of 100, well that's just 10. Square root of 121, that's just 11. So those were already perfect squares, so that was really, really helpful and convenient. Here's another example. The square root of 8, you could simplify it a little bit, but it's far easier to just recognize that if I combine these together, 2 over 8 is 1 fourth, and 4 is a perfect square. So in the front, 8 over 2 is 4. 8 over 2 is 4. Now under the radical, 2 over 8 reduces to 1 over 4. Okay, so this is 4 multiplied by. The square root of 1 is just 1. The square root of 4 is just 2. 4 over 2 is 2. Okay, let's try one more over here. We can combine all this stuff under a single radical. 5 over 7 multiplied by 2 over 5. The 5's cancel out. So that gives us the square root of 2 sevenths. Now remember, according to m my rule, if you ignore this square root of a fraction, this could be your final answer. But to do it precisely, we're going to need to rationalize. So we've got the 2 sevenths um, here. We're going to multiply by root 7 over root 7. Multiply by whatever square root is in the denominator. Because square root of 7 here times square root of 7 here just gives you 7, which is no longer a, num a fraction inside the radical. And in the numerator, 2 times 7 is 14. So this would be the final answer following all the rules for simplifying properly. Um, so there's lots of examples. They're really uh, pretty quick, each individual problem. You just have to practice factoring and simplifying um, the radicals. Note that you can divide first, or you can reduce them and then divide. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So you have lots of options for all these kind of problems. And you want to just get lots of practice. Let's do a couple more. The last ones here is going to involve uh, multiplying by a conjugate. So for example, this one I've got the radical in the bottom. But what I need to multiply by, if I just multiply by a root 5, that won't work because now I'm going to have a 5 root 5. So I have to multiply by the conjugate, which is the same thing but a minus sign. So 5 minus root 5, 5 minus root 5. Okay, in the bottom, again, I'm multiplying difference of squares. So 5 times 5 is 25, and this times this is going to be negative. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. And in the numerator, we can distribute this guy in. We're almost finished. 5 times the square root of 5 is 5 root 5. And root 5 times root 5 with a minus sign root 5 times root 5 is just 5. Okay, so final, final answer here. 5 root 5 minus 5 divided by 25 minus 5 is 20. Okay, however, at this point, you might notice that you could factor a 5 out. So you want to go a little bit farther. If you factor a 5 out, you'll be left behind root 5 minus 1. Okay, and now the 5 and the 20 can reduce. So our final, final answer, 5 and 20 reduced to 1 and 4. So square root of 5 minus 1 over 4. So anything you can do to keep simplifying. So you have to combine the new techniques we're learning with simplifying radicals with the old techniques that we learned before, like factoring common factors.